In today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what I would be doing if you want to scale your print on demand business to six figures this calendar year. Now, there are a bunch of decisions you need to make when actually starting to think about setting up your first print on demand business. And there can be some key decisions that can be really detrimental if you choose the wrong thing from the get go. Now, you can always correct course later, but I think it's a really great idea to start off very strong so that you have the best chances to actually scale to six figures in your first year. So I'm going to be starting out from the very basics, what you need to be doing from day one, and then share some more advanced tips for down the road as you continue to grow your print on demand business this year. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Now, the very first decision I think you need to make as a print on demand seller is if you're going to be a niche store or more of a general store. Now, a lot of people labor a ton over this decision, and this is one that if you're very new to print on demand, I think that my advice is going to be start with a general store. Now, if you're not exactly sure what this means, this just means that in a general store, you're going to be selling a bunch of different products from all sorts of different niches across the board. However, if you go with more of a niche store, you're kind of locking yourself into one thing. So maybe you have a store that is just all political themed. So that means you only really are going to be able to make political designs and sell political things because you have branded yourself that way. However, if you go the other direction and start with a general shop, you can have those kind of designs. But then if you see something else is trending, you can sell that. You can pull other niches that you know are doing well. And that way you have a lot of other things to draw from that can be getting getting you sales. So this is really great if you are a new print on demand seller, because a lot of times you don't even know what niches would be worthwhile pursuing as just a niche specific shop. So sometimes if you're a more experienced print on demand seller, you already have thousands of dollars in sales under your belt. Maybe you can pick just a niche to pursue. But if this is your first time around, you're just looking to make your first six figures, I would definitely concentrate on making more of a general shop because you can try out a lot of things. And if a niche doesn't work, no harm, no foul. You just move on to the next thing. And the reality is a lot of people aren't specifically looking at your whole shop. A lot of times when people discover your items, they are just clicking on that one thing and they are purchasing it and never looking at what else you have for sale. So a lot of times it doesn't really even matter what kind of shop you are. But I think that my suggestion for scaling really fast would be to start with a general shop. Now, my next piece of advice for starting starting off really strong is to decide what platforms you're going to be selling on and to be selling on more than one platform. So in today's video, I'm actually partnering with Printify, who is my production partner of choice, and they are who enable me to be able to sell on a place like Etsy. So if you're not familiar with it, a manufacturing partner is going to do all the printing, packing, shipping, taking care of those orders, while you're just listing the items on a place like Etsy. Etsy. So I'm going to have all their information linked down below in the description, but really I can't say enough good things about Printify. Their prices are just unbeatable and they are just a fantastic partner to be able to help you to sell on a place like Etsy, which is one of the biggest marketplaces. So I would definitely suggest starting selling on Etsy. You can really have a lot of success super early on there, but I also would try to get into the Merch by Amazon platform. If you haven't heard of that before, it is a platform that is run by Amazon where you can sell print on demand products on Amazon. Now, this is a more exclusive program you do have to apply. So I will actually link a video that shows you how to apply there and have a good chance of getting accepted. But I would really try to be on those two platforms. Now, if you want to add an even more places to be able to have the potential to get sales. You could try out Redbubble or TeePublic or even Zazzle. All of those are great sites, probably not going to be the number of sales you're going to get on a place like Etsy or Amazon, but those are also great contenders and they're just going to help you kind of feel out what it takes to make a design that is going to get sales on a platform. So I would be applying for Amazon Merch and getting started on Etsy right away if you can. Now, the next really important decision that you need to make 
is decide what kind of products that you are selling. Now, a lot of you might be like, well, duh, you're going to sell t-shirts, you're a print-on-demand business. And that is definitely one route that you can take with this. However, I think that if you really want to scale to six figures, you might want to think out of the box this year. So you could actually try to sell a different product that maybe has a lot less competition. So if you are selling with a production partner like Printify, they have over 800 different product types that are not t-shirts. So you could sell everything from tumblers. You could sell kids clothes. You could sell candles. There are all sorts of different, really unique products that you can draw from. Now I'll actually link an entire video I have here with some of my best product suggestions that make a ton of sales. So you could really pick one of those, but there are so many different things that you could go with. Now, even though t-shirts are a really good seller, I still sell tons and tons of them every single day. There is a ton of competition when it comes to t-shirts. So you could put those in your shop, but maybe try pairing it with something else that maybe has a little bit less competition. One idea is just instead of maybe doing t-shirts, maybe just do the same concepts, but only put them on hoodies and sell all of those. So anything else is just going to have slightly less competition because a lot of people are looking for the lowest barrier to entry and t-shirts are just really easy to do. So a lot of people go with that first, but see if you can think out of the box and try something a little bit different that could give you an edge on the competition. Now, the next thing that I think that you should be focusing on is really getting a ton of evergreen type of designs in your print on demand stores. Now, if you don't know what a evergreen design is, this is really a niche that can be sold every single day of the year. So if we think about something like the election coming up and election type design, that is more of a trend because it is really constrained to the time that it's happening. Same thing with, I talked about that eclipse shirts are going to be selling really well because in April there is an eclipse coming up. Now that is a trend because it's only only really going to sell for a few months of the year and then it's going to come and go. But with evergreen designs, that design could sell in January, it could sell in June, it could sell at the end of the year. So it's really important to have a bunch of those designs because as you add them, they are just going to stack upon themselves and then grow the sales that your whole store is making. If you are putting all your eggs in the basket of targeting a trend that maybe is over in April, you might be able to scale to a few thousand dollars in your shop, but then once that event happens, you're kind of back to square one. So it's really important to be adding a bunch of evergreen type of designs. Now, these are things like professions, hobbies. They can be things like animals. They can be tons of stuff like that. And I actually, really suggest going with something that is going to be able to make you kind of do the work one time and then replicate that over and over. So I like to go for things like careers. So there are hundreds of different careers, but if you find kind of a format or a design style that really works where you're targeting a certain career, you can just kind of swap that out with a bunch of different careers. And then you could potentially have hundreds of different designs that all have a lot of demand for them because people are super passionate about their career. Same thing with different types of pets. If you wanted to make a bunch of designs that were all based on people's pets, that could be a great way to start. And then there's tons of different dog breeds, tons of cat breeds, a lot of other types of pets as well. So those are great things to target. You can even do what I like to call cross niching, where you take two categories like that. So maybe you have like a dentist and then you have a pet. So maybe a golden doodle and you make a dentist golden doodle type shirt. Now that is not constrained to any time frame. It's an evergreen design that a dentist with a golden doodle could buy any time of year. Now, if you want some complete list with over 40,000 different evergreen niche ideas like that, I do have a cross niching guide that I'll link down below in the description. That's going to help you guys out with that. It's totally free if you want to get that. But I really think that you should be putting a lot of your attention into those evergreen designs. That doesn't mean you can't occasionally target a trend that is coming up, but I think you should be putting a lot more focus on those designs that you can kind of grow and scale up with that isn't just going to make you profit this year, but hopefully even in two years after you've grown this business, you're still making money off those designs. Now, the next thing I really think that you need to do if you want to scale your business to six figures this year is you have to be uploading every single day. Now, I know a lot of people say this, but I truly think that it is one of the keys to growing your business. Now, there's so many people I get comments all the time that are saying, well, I made some designs and I'm just not getting sales. When come to find out, 
out maybe they took one Saturday and they uploaded like 20 designs and then just kind of called it a day and were waiting for something to happen. But the way that I grew my business really fast is from the get go, I chose a really lofty goal for myself and I uploaded that amount of designs every single day. Now, when I first started, I was like, I am going to make 10 designs every single day, no matter what. And I did that for months. So this really was able to grow my catalog and give me some designs that became best sellers out of that large number of designs. So I think it's important for you to be able to pick a goal that you can try and upload every single day. So maybe that's only two or three designs, but even if that's the case, two or three designs over a few months adds up to hundreds of products. But it really comes down to that compounding effect. So that's way more effective to upload three designs every single day for three months than it is to just upload 20 designs randomly here and there when you feel like it. And it's gonna feel like a lot less work because you're doing it in small increments. Now, a lot of times print on demand is somewhat of a numbers game. Yes, you have to have really great niches, you have to have good designs, but a lot of times the designs that you create aren't going to sell, only a small percentage of your whole catalog will. So you really need to have a lot of designs to kind of put out there so that some of them can become best sellers. And the best way to do this is by picking a number of uploads you're going to do every single day and sticking with that throughout the entire year. Now think about if you uploaded three designs for every single day of the entire year, by the end of the year, you'd have over a thousand products uploaded. And that seems like so many to upload, but by just doing the work a little bit every single day, you are really setting yourself up for success. Now, another thing that I really think that you should be doing if you do want to scale your business to six figures this year is you're gonna want to prioritize and capitalize on viral t-shirt and product styles, but not necessarily trends. So I talked about you want to have those evergreen style designs, but I think you should also be capitalizing on kind of those like viral aesthetics and trends that we're seeing for the way that products are being made. So what I mean by this is you don't necessarily want a trend, but when we see something like that groovy wavy font is doing really well, it's selling well, you're gonna take that kind of aesthetic and you're going to put it on the niches that you're targeting. Same thing with, we just saw that those like bootleg style designs are selling like crazy. Now, if you don't know what this is, I actually have a full tutorial on how to make those bootleg style designs, but this is something that you're going to take. And when you find a niche that you're going to target, put it in one of these kind of viral styles, and then you could have a winning design. So a lot of times when I see that a new kind of aesthetic is emerging, I'm taking a lot of my evergreen designs and I'm putting them in that style to kind of have a whole new market for people looking for that kind of look of shirt. Now, these a lot of times have a way longer shelf life than just a trend would because these aesthetics are typically going to be trendy for a year or a couple of years. So if you put some of your best to only niches in those that can do really, really well. And you want to capitalize on some of that momentum because you are going to need a little bit of momentum. You are going to need to get some best sellers if you are going to scale to six figures. Now, as you are growing and starting to see some of those sales emerge, this is where I'd start implementing some a little bit more advanced strategies. So I think that at this point, it might be time to start learning about advertising and start thinking about advertising some of your designs. Now, I definitely do not recommend advertising when you are first getting started. You are just super unfamiliar with why things really do well and what if your products are actually going to be popular and make sales. However, as you find that you do have some designs that are kind of emerging as those front runners that are becoming best sellers for you, then I think it's time to add some advertising dollars to kind of fuel that fire to be the gas that kind of makes those really take off. So if you have particular designs or products that have sold maybe a few hundred times, put some advertising dollars behind those. And then because you know that those already are really good sellers, that is going to help it continue to do well and just kind of catch to pull that hopefully into those first pages where they are always ranking for those SEO terms. So if you don't know how to advertise, I definitely would not suggest just throwing a bunch of money at your whole catalog, but specifically targeting those designs that have already made sales because they're validated and they were found organically. That means that if you put advertising dollars behind them, it's probably going to help it continue to do well. Now, again, as your business continues to grow and you're trying to reach that six figure mark, one thing that you need to be paying attention to is what 
products and designs are really doing well. So then take note of those niches and really just try to take advantage of the niche that you found that's doing well and create more and more products in that same niche. So even if you have a general store, if you find that there's about three or four different niches in your shop that kind of are taking up all of the sales, they're making up the bulk of your profit, only start targeting those niches because you validated that they've done well. So just every single day, start creating more products in those particular niches. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every single day. We're just trying to figure out what is going to work and then we're going to exploit that niche and just make as many products as we can in that. So we kind of own that keyword. When someone searches that niche, we wanna have hundreds of different listings for that type of item because then we're making sure that we're going to get that sale. So really print on demand, it's kind of a rinse and repeat thing. You're going to every single day research products, you're gonna make new designs and you're going to upload them in low competition, high demand niches. And you're just going to keep repeating that process and then validating the niches that you found have made sales and keep adding to those. And then by doing this, you're going to be able to grow a print on demand business that can scale you to six figures and beyond. Now, if you really want to check out some other product suggestions that aren't t-shirts, I definitely recommend watching this video next. It has some amazing ideas for you and shops that you could really just take and run with to scale your business to six figures this year. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.